Welcome back, everybody, to episode 12 of the Chatterbox Podcast. Chatterbox Podcast episode 12 means it's Thanksgiving week, and when you're watching this, it'll either be Thanksgiving Day while you're watching some football, or it'll be a little after, and uh, week 12 already, man, the season's two-thirds done, dude, after this week. What are we uh, That's crazy. Yeah, don't start me on that. Here in about 18 weeks, not 18 weeks, here in about six, seven weeks, 18 teams are going to be looking forward to the draft. While another 14 are going to be uh, trying to fight to hold up that Lombardi in Vegas this year. So, um, not that crazy. What Super Bowl was this year, Las Vegas? Yeah. Ugh. Not that crazy of a week this week, though. I mean... Nothing too outlandish happened. I mean, no big upsets, I don't think. Well. There were a couple. Well. At least, like, for us. Unfortunately. Some of us. Yeah. But before we get into those, um, Super Bowl rematch last night, dude. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to watch the game at all. I did not. But there was some drops from Kansas City. I, I did see I the, the drop that MVR had, or MBS. Um, and then two plays later on fourth and 25, Patrick Mahomes again, just like he did against the Lions, put it right in the receiver's hands. He dropped it. Um, it was a tougher catch. Probably could have been DPI. But anyways, um so wise here definitely could have come down with it. How do you uh how do you feel about the uh Chiefs right now? Um are you still confident they're making the Super Bowl? I still think they can do it because Andy Reid is Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. Uh the defense actually looks a lot more solid than it has in recent years. They have a top they have a top five defense. Yeah. Um but as of right now, they have one weapon on offense, and it is Travis Kelsey. And he looks a little distracted out there for whatever the reason may be. I don't know, maybe flying to Argentina in the middle of the season. I, I, it could be anything. It could be anything. But who, who knows what it is. Um, but he does look a little bit out of it out there at least he did this week yeah so it, it essentially boils down to the, the chiefs need a wide receiver one yes um you just need a playmaker that's all right uh Kadarius tony's trash marquise valdez scantling he's a solid deep threat, but he's getting old catches with his body man he doesn't catch with his hands um they got a couple of other really not known receivers that'll do something here and there but Nobody that you can look at and go, that is wide receiver one. And that's hurting them. I think that's hurting them. And the other thing is Pacheco, their running back, is pretty good. Like, he's not 4 2, 4 3 speed, but he runs hard every play. And they were getting some good runs off. And I feel like they got away from that too much in the second half, dude. I. Did not pick the Chiefs to win, make the Super Bowl. And I think AFC title game might be their ceiling because they don't have any receivers. In the last three games they've played, in the second half, they have not scored a point. In the second half. In wow. three games. So I, I will say it like this. The Ravens are the best team in the AFC. And the AFC right now, the Ravens do look like the best team, yes. Uh, that's the way I'm, I'm going to put it. I will never, ever go as far as to say the Chiefs will not make the Super Bowl just because it's the Chiefs. Right. They I do mean, the best quarterback in the league. Right. That is... That's, that's a hot take that even I won't take. No. I'm not saying they can't. I'm just saying I don't think they will. Um, like if they made the Super Bowl, I wouldn't be like, oh my god, this is shocking. But I mean, in all honesty, even if they added an aging wide receiver one 
that really wasn't that great anymore, but could still command some catches. I mean, even if they added somebody like D Hop. Dude, that's what I was about to say. They had the chance to get D Hop, dude. And you know he would have taken a little less money to go play with Patrick Mahomes and go win a Super Bowl. Like, you know he would have done that. I mean, I I think instantly adding a veteran like that, instantly he's going to take pressure off of Travis Kelsey. Right. Free him up. And they they just need to add somebody. Um, Literally just about anybody. Because when you have a quarterback with an offensive line that's that good and a defense that solid... It really does not take much to really help the team. I think they're, truthfully, I think they're missing Eric Bieniemy. Um, don't get me wrong, Andy Reid is a genius. I mean, he's one of the best offensive minds we've ever seen. But it's th- when you're not calling the plays, it takes you a while to get back into that rhythm of calling plays. Like, he hasn't called plays since before Bieniemy was the coordinator, so. Right, and I mean, we can definitely see that just in, like, Patrick Mahomes' stat lines. I mean, he's obviously not bad, but he's not putting up numbers that he was. Oh, last year. He's putting up above-average stats, but right. we have come to expect Patrick Mahomes to put up holy shit stats. Right. Um, moving off the Chiefs to the team that actually won the game last night, um, I do have to admit something, as I put in our doc. I said the Eagles a couple of weeks ago had an eight-game stretch that I would be surprised if they went four and four in it. And since then, and again, that stretch is not all the way over. But since I said that, they've gone four now. And I hate I. I hate the Eagles with all of my heart and soul, dude. I do. But they're just showing you they can win any way you want them to win. And it sucks. Um, I I don't think they care. You want to win in a shootout? Okay, let's shoot it out then. You want to be tough? Have a gritty game? Let's do that. You want us to run the ball the whole game? Let's do that. You want Jalen Hurts to carve you up? He's not healthy, by the way. You can tell his knee is not right. But they went 4-0, and I don't see the Eagles losing four straight games. So I have to I, I have to own up to I'm impressed. I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. Do I think they're going to go to the Super Bowl? No. I don't. I think the Niners will beat them. But Hurts my soul. To admit that you're right. I know, dude. It cuts deep, man. I mean, I know literally last week I was like, the Eagles are not good. They are just barely beating bad teams. Now, granted, it was still a close game, but... And they probably should have lost, but... Right. Yeah, those, that, those are the games that they somehow win. And I it was 17-7. to and then, and then I think it was 17-14, and Travis Kelsey fumbled the ball inside the five-yard line. I knew it was over. I knew the Eagles were going to win right then and there. I was like, I should just go to bed. But my dumbass stayed up, watched the whole fucking game, and then I was dog-ass tired all day at work today because I want the Eagles so bad to lose, I'm giving up. I want the Eagles to lose so bad, I'm giving up sleep. <laughs> Delirious. All right, but- this part of the conversation is hurting my soul, so let's just end with fuck Philly and move on. I'm down. Um, it is. It's that week. It's that one out of every two weeks we get a year, buddy. Cowboys Commanders. How you feeling? How you feeling? I'm not going to watch it. You confident? No, I'm not going to watch. You confident? You're going to be like one of those Commanders fans like Ann Amber who was telling me that you guys are going to beat us because you guys beat us all the time even though Dak Prescott is 9-2 and two against you guys since he's been in the league. Are you one of those? I'm going to watch that game. Stop doing that. I can't hear you. I am not even going to watch that game. You got to watch it, dude. It's Thanksgiving Day, man. I, I watched them playing the 
New York Giants. I watched them turn the ball over five times in one game. Maybe six. I didn't even watch the full game. I turned it off like halfway through the third quarter. Um, fucking painful. <laughs> I I literally wrote on Facebook that being a Commanders fan is actually taking years off of my life. Amber Amber was here Sunday and she read that out loud, so I found that funny. Um, it's for the Cowboys. I don't know, man. We basically had two bye weeks coming into this. Dak Prescott hasn't played in two straight fourth quarters, basically. So he, even though it's a short week, we're at home and he better be well rested. I mean, I, I fully expect to lose this game by 30 points. I won't say that. I think it's a rivalry game. It's Thanksgiving, I think. So you say that, but so, like the, the commanders never, ever play the Cowboys like they play the Eagles. It just doesn't happen. Not anymore. It used to happen. I, like, again, I'm not a Dak apologist, and we're going to, I'm going to kind of, again, make a point in our next topic. But there, if there's one thing Dak does, it is beat the shit out of bad teams. Which he is going to do to the Commanders because we are yeah. a bad team. The Giants and Commanders have been bad his entire tenure. And I looked it up today. He is 12 and 2 against the Giants, and he hasn't lost to them since 2016. And he's 9 and 2 against the Commanders. Yeah. And one of those losses came last year in week 18 when it didn't matter. Right. Um at this at this I don't point, think, I don't think we can play with our food though, man. I think we have to come out. I think we if if it's like three to three. Or seven to three at the end of the first quarter. I don't think it's going to be an easy game. Now, if we go out there and it's ten nothing, fourteen nothing at the end of the first quarter, that that'll be wraps. You guys will give up. But, and I think you're honestly just waiting till the end of the year to fire uh, Ron Rivera. I think you're trying to get your best draft pick you can possible, and then you let him go. Well, at at that point, it's just tank. Why not? Honestly, at this I mean, point. yeah. Um, it, it's just like we cannot put the entire game together at one time. Every game, it's either the defense is all right, which the defense was actually pretty good against the Giants. I mean, we finished with how many fucking sacks? So, I mean, come on, let's be real. It was Tommy DeVito, bro. Right. But some fucking how we're just giving up. You can't turn the ball over five times. That's just you can't turn the ball over five times in the NFL and expect to win, right? Um, so we have games the defense plays awesome, and then we can't put anything together in the pass game. Um, for some reason, you know, our quarterback and our wide receivers just forgot how to play football. But our running backs were doing great. Like fucking amazing. Yeah. And we can just never put it all together. One part of the team always has to suck and blow it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, dude. And then they get desperate and Sam Howell ends up with three interceptions. One of them being a pick six. Or getting just absolutely destroyed in the backfield. Um, the commanders are bad. They need to tank, get the best possible pick they can get. In. Yeah. Fucking fire Ron Rivera. And Jack W. No. Um, moving to two other teams who we thought were fighting for their season last week. One is done, and the other, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. The first, this should be quick. Uh, Joe Burrow's out for the year. Bengals uh, are done. Bengals um, are done. They've been they've been fighting injury. Joe Burrow has not looked good. Um, quarterbacks do not really come back from injuries very well like that, especially in the throwing hand. I'm hoping that since he has a whole off season, he can just take his time, 
But, I mean, the Bengals have just, they've been reckless with him, dude. His calf was hurt. They he made needs to get the fuck out of Cincinnati. He needs to get out of Cincinnati. He already signed his extension. He, he's there. He's stuck. Yeah. And he's uh, screwed. But his calf was hurt. They made him play on it for four weeks. And then now, all of a sudden, he's got a wrist thing. It was up to the game. It was right up before the game. Yeah. So, I don't know. And now he breaks snaps of, like, this fucking hand. Yeah. Uh, The Bills, I guess, saved their season for now, question mark. So, um, is is it Matt Brady? Something Brady? Joe Brady. Joe Brady. Um, This is the best Bills team I have seen in a while. You mean, like, you mean like the best game they've played this yeah. year? Yes. Um, they just did everything right. They didn't do anything crazy. He took the pressure off of Josh Allen. They got the run game going, which is just amazing to say for the Bills. And they need to continue to do that. Right. If they play every game like this for the rest of the season, they are instant Super Bowl contenders. It also helps when your first drive starts on the 21 because the Jets fumble their opening kickoff. That, of the that too. I mean, that'll, that'll give any team confidence. I think from that point... <laughs> well, but we also do have to remember well, they're the playing thing, the Jets. Here's the thing, though. They started on their own 20... Uh, the Jets 21, and their drive was three plays for negative nine yards, and they kicked the field goal. So, like, I'm not ready to say that everything's fine. Right, I mean, it's the first game with a new offensive coordinator. There's going to be some growing pains, but I like what I saw. And their schedule doesn't get easy. I think their next three games are the Eagles, Chiefs, and Cowboys. Well, we'll see what they're really about. And they still have to play the Dolphins in there somewhere. They're 6-5. and five. I think you have to win 10 games to get in the playoffs in the AFC. I don't see him winning five of their last seven. Just based on the Josh Allen roller coaster that we continue to see. Right. So I don't know. They're they're gonna be a fun one to keep keep your eye on. Yeah, for sure. Um do I hope they get into the playoffs? No, because I fucking hate the Bills. I don't hate them as bad as I hate Philly, but... I don't care if if they get in and you're not, dude. I really don't. I think they're... Even if they do get in their wild card exit, they're not a serious team this year. As as of right now, no. No. It's not. A team that is serious that will be playing for the division on Sunday is the Houston Texans. Who... I don't know. I mean, again, they... Probably should have handled the Cardinals better. I think Kyler has helped the Cardinals play at least competitively in these games. Um, But CJ CJ threw three picks. He was a little too aggressive for my taste in a game that you really didn't need to be aggressive to win. Um, Threw three three picks and still puts up like almost a 90 rating. He was on on pace to throw for 550 yards at halftime. Like, I mean, that's... He he is obviously... He's obviously going to be Rookie of the Year. Yeah, he's changed his life. Year. Huh? He's changed his life there. I mean, D'Amico, oh, yeah. D'Amico Ryan is going to be Coach of the Year, too, because what he's I mean, done, their defense has been pretty freaking nuts, too. Right. Um. You know, the lowest rating that he's had as a quarterback all season was 78, and that was week one. Week one. Yeah. And, I mean, game one. He still pulled out a win, and this was one of his worst outings yet. And they still won. He threw five picks all year, and three of them were in that game. Dude, I'm telling you, if they beat the Jags this week and they win the division, I I don't know how you don't at least put them on your MVP ballot. Like, I don't know if in the NFL it's like the NBA where you vote for five, but if it is, I don't know how he's not a top five MVP candidate. I have to agree with you. I mean, he is single-handedly turning that franchise around. I mean... When yeah. when I looked at this team at the beginning of the year, I'm going to go back and read it. 
word for word how I describe the Texans. Didn't you say like, what the fuck or something like that? Something like that. Let's see. All right. Texans, Texans, Texans. Long page. Do, 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 do. I gave him a three out of ten. And my, this is what I said. What the fuck even is this team? Send them to the SEC. Dude, like, okay, yeah, you had Dalton Schultz, great. Noah Brown, great. I only know them because they played on the Cowboys. I'm sure a common football fan has no idea who either, at least Noah Brown is. Right. And, Tank but Dell, they're, they're Nico Dak Collins, no one, like, Dude, Tank Dell has been amazing. And he's a rookie, too. Yeah. Uh, the Texans know how to draft. They they nailed this one. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I will I will give them that much without a fucking doubt. Um, damn, our uh, our show is AFC heavy today, but I feel like that's where most of the storylines are. Um, yeah, the yeah. NFC, the NFC just feels locked up. Like I feel like we know who the seven playoff teams are going to be. And whether they win or lose that week, it really doesn't matter because we know who the seven teams are going to be. Um, staying in the AFC, Brandon Staley, I don't know how he's... It, it's Tuesday night. I don't know how he still has a job. Now, I get it. The Chargers dropped a lot of passes and one hit Keenan Allen right here in the end zone. And I don't know if the sun got in his eyes or what, but he dropped it. And then on the last drive, when Justin Herbert was trying to make something happen, he hit a receiver over the shoulder in the bread basket and dropped it. So I don't know if that's why Brandon Staley's not fired. But he got snippy with a reporter after the game talking about, I'm calling the defense. It's like, it's me. Don't worry about it. Like, stop asking the question. It's like, okay, yeah, you're supposed to be a defensive specialist coach. And you have the worst passing defense in the league, bro. Like, what are you bringing to the table? So, my opinion on it was what it simply boils down to. There's absolutely no reason for this team to be this fucking bad. No reason. Yeah, they have the highest payroll on defense, dude, in the league. Right. I mean, if you look at the roster on both sides of the ball, I mean, it's just insanity to think that they could potentially miss the playoffs. And it's sad, too, because, like, Herbert, man, like, there's a, people, like, obviously, Cleveland Cleveland and Chicago are where quarterbacks' careers go to die, right? I mean, we see it with Deshaun Watson. We see it with Justin Fields over and over, quarterback after quarterback. Right. But somebody young, like but Herbert, who, if you want to be. I always say the brightest stars burn out the fastest. Yes. Like, if you want to be a a really good quarterback that has mediocre win like win loss records every year go to the chargers because that's what you'll get right <laughs> I mean, there that's that's the story of philip rivers whole career dude drew Brees was there before philip rivers i mean I, I don't know they're just they're there's absolutely no reason for that team to be as bad as they are. And when they are that bad, the only place it turns to is the coach. And it just pisses me off, man. Because I feel bad for the kid. The kid, he's like five years older than me, whatever. <laughs> but, like, I feel bad for the dude. I feel bad for the whole team. I mean, that is a very, very talented roster. I mean, look, let's look at the offense by itself. Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen. Um, who's their really good lineman? The Slater? Um, Slater, yep. Um, Slater's really good. They got that Quentin Johnson kid from TCU this year in the draft. Uh, they Mike, have another wide receiver that's pretty solid. Mike Williams, but he's always hurt, man. He's hurt again. He's at, he tore his ACL. Um, I don't know, dude. I just, like, you talk about the commanders being in football purgatory. I feel like quarterback purgatory is the Chargers. Seriously. Like, that is where QBs go to die and be mediocre forever. Well, I hope for his so, sake. And I would say I feel bad for their fan base, but only 10 of them show up to the games anyways, so. That's right. That's right. 
Um, um, so, uh, so on to the next question that you asked me. I will let you ask the question because I, I really want to talk about this one. Another team in the AFC West that started out pretty freaking shittily, if we're being honest, but has kind of turned it around and won four in a row against not terrible competition either. Do you think the Broncos could maybe sneak in? Uh, so we're, I'm going to lead with the... Did you judge Russ? We were too quick to judge Russ. And Sean, well, really it's Sean Payton because Russ, Russ played like shit last year. So is uh, it Sean Payton? Right. Uh, we disrespected Russell Wilson for too long and he's had enough of it. Um, the yeah, past that's... four games, he's been well over uh, 100 passer rating. They have beat four, I would say three decent teams and one meh team. But they beat Green Bay, they beat fucking Kansas City, they beat the Bills, and they beat the Vikings. I mean, you can make arguments as to why they won all those games, but it's a simple fact of the Broncos have won four straight and Russell Wilson is not playing like he did in Seattle, but close to it. Yep. We were too quick to judge. We need to watch out for the Broncos. Some reason that defense just like flipped the switch. Yeah. They just turned it on out of nowhere. Um they need to be watched out for. It's that simple. I think dude, there's a that jumble of teams in the AFC is just so I don't know. Because the Browns are probably getting in. They're seven and three, right? They probably need to win three more games to solidify themselves in the playoffs. Steelers are six and four. The Bills are six and five now. And the Steelers uh, fired Matt Canada. So we're going to see how that goes Steelers next year. Fired Matt Canada. I still don't watch any of their games because it's boring as hell. And I don't care about the Steelers because, like I said, they're boring and whatever. The Texans are in the wild card spot. And if that's not a lot, if it's not them, it's the Jags. The Colts are five and five, but they're not, I don't think they're for real. Um, no. So, I mean, and then you got Bengals who are done because Burrow's out. And you've got Vegas who's five and six and kind of responded to their new coach, but they're not serious. So, the, right now, the Broncos are in ninth with the only team – with one of the teams in front of them being the Colts, who I don't think are serious. I think they could. I definitely think they could. I would have to agree with you. Do I think if they make it in, they make it far? No. God, no. Do I think they can make it in? Yeah. Do I think if they make it in and they play the Chiefs, Ravens, Texans, Jags in the first round, I think they lose. I don't think they win that game. Right. But impressive that they made it in when some people consider them the worst team in the league at the beginning of the year. So, um, Being in Miami too. I mean, Miami hung seventy on them. So <laughs> they played them out. I, I, I mean, the defense has improved, but I mean, I, I don't think I think Miami would win. So I think they'd be a first round bounce. But if they made yeah. it, it'd be impressive. And I do have to. That's where we disagree, though, is I think it was more Sean. I think it's been more Sean Payton in his offense than it has been Russ. Because they're still not scoring out like crazy number of points. Like their defense has just turned it on. And Russ has kind of, you know. Yeah, I would have to agree. Because he's had a couple bad, really bad games here and there. But honestly, all in all, over the course of the season, he's averaging like 100 passer rating. Yeah. So, he definitely picked up his play for sure. Yeah. Um, um, but We're running out of a little bit of time here. Do you want to – and you got some more questions to ask, but I don't think most of them are NFL-related, are they? No, no. We can wait till next uh, next session to – all right, so you want to do our uh, picks then? Yeah, we can do our picks. Uh, mm. So running through last week real quick. Um, Trey actually beat one of us this week. Yep. Uh, Matt was plus seven. Trey was plus eight. I was plus nine. Um, we didn't do very good on our picks this week. 
or also at least it didn't seem like we did we really only disagreed on three games this week three yeah we only disagreed on the Bengals, the browns and kansas city and somehow fucking trey knew that philly was gonna win that piece of shit well he just he's not as fuck philly as we are so should be oh man we got three thursday games this week god thanksgiving dude it's gonna be awesome all right i got trey's picks here so our thursday thanksgiving games we got green bay at detroit trey picks detroit so do i i'm gonna ditto that you better fucking not well i i, I... I just want to hear your next pick. Washington at Dallas. Trey picked Dallas. I'm going to pick Dallas. A dick. It's not even fun anymore. It's not even fun. Fine. You want me to say it? You guys suck. Okay. Whatever. Next. San Francisco at Seattle. Trey picked Seattle. Geno Smith got knocked out of the Rams game for a couple of drives. Don't know if he's going to play or not, so give me San Fran. Taking the 49ers. All right. We got a Friday night game. Why do we have a fucking Friday night game? Because it's all about money and Amazon Prime needs their game of the week. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways. All right. Uh, Friday night, we got Miami at the Jets. Fucking Miami. Trey picks Miami. I will be picking the Dolphins there for sure. All right, on to Sunday. New Orleans at Atlanta. Hmm. Two bad teams. Might be a solid game. Trey hmm. pick. Trey picked New Orleans. Who are you picking? Atlanta was on bye this week, weren't they? So. Was New Orleans on bye too? I think so. Fuck. I think I have to go with Atlanta. I'll go to New Orleans. Let me catch up to you. I'm not worry about Trey. He only got two games right that one week. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to go through Trey and do, through Trey's and do his by percentage. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a bunch of math for this at the end because he kind of like butted in late and I didn't do a good job keeping track of it. Great. All right. Charles. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. That's Trey right. picked Cincinnati. I'm taking Pittsburgh. He only picks Cincinnati because they're like his AFC favorite team. Yeah, well, fuck him. And they're going to lose, so. Carolina at Tennessee. Trey picked Tennessee. I'm going to pick Tennessee. Tennessee. I thought I said that. No, you didn't say a fucking word. Um, I mean, they got me sleep deprived in this hell. Tampa Bay at Indianapolis. Trey picked Tampa Bay. I'm going to agree with him. Give me Indy. I'm going to be different this week, dude. Give me Indy. Also, just because uh, I want to make fun of Charlie, if you need anything, uh, if you need anything from Tractor Supply, it's getting a hell of a hell of a screen time here. So. Hey, if, if they, if they want to sponsor, dude, hat. I got like four of these hats. All right. Dude, I have that same I have that same pen. That pen is fucking tough. Oh yeah, dude. I love it. We got it from a transmission shop. What does it say on it? Glen Burnie Transmissions. Glen Burnie MD. 210-61-410-766-8500. Well, there's another ad. Anyways. Wow. Uh, we got the Patriots at the Giants. Oh my fucking God. Giants, I guess. Trey picked the Giants. Fuck. Ah, horrible. 
Dude. Yeah, I guess the Giants. I mean, I don't I don't know. I'm not gonna pick the Patriots and lose that one. <laughs> we got Jacksonville at Houston. Dude. Trey picked Houston. Jack they're at Houston. They are at Houston. Oh, fuck. It's my <laughs> Super Bowl pick, dude. <laughs> Jacksonville. I'm picking Jacksonville. Well, the only so my rationale behind it is Houston already beat the hell out of Jacksonville, and I think Jacksonville knows this is a this is a big game, so I think they're gonna step up. I think I'm gonna pick Houston. I'm gonna go with Trey on this one. All right, we got Cleveland at Denver. Trey picked Denver. I think I'm going to go back to the Browns. Denver. Dude, fuck, that's a hard dude. We got some good games this week, actually. Like on Sunday. Like, like I, I just think that Cleveland's defense is just too suffocating. I think, but see, I think Denver's defense is too suffocating. Denver's defense is turning it on. You're telling me you trust DTR as the Browns quarterback? I mean, Without Nick Chubb, the Steelers, too? Steelers, and I think the Steelers are a better team than the Broncos. All right. All right. We got the Rams at the Cardinals. Trey picked the Rams. I'm picking the Cardinals, dude. I'm picking the Cardinals. I remember last week I asked if uh, – the, the Cardinals were back on track with Kyler being back. And, you really? know, I, I think they are. Which is kind of stupid because just tank at this point, but whatever. Uh, we got Kansas City at Las Vegas. Trey picked Kansas City. I'm picking Kansas City. Yep, Kansas City. All right. We got Buffalo at Philly, and Trey picked Philly again. Fuck you, Trey. Who are you picking? I'm picking the I'm picking the fucking Bills because I, right. I hate the Eagles um, more than I hate the Bills. Well, I'm picking the Eagles. Ravens at the Chargers. I'm Ravens. Ravens. All right. Well, Monday we got Chicago at Minnesota. Trey picked Minnesota. I'm taking Minnesota. Minnesota. Well, that wraps up our week 12 picks. Uh, we got less than a minute here, so we're going to take a quick commercial break, even though we don't have ads, but whatever. Quick break. We'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes to go through some other sports and other things. So, uh, see y'all in 10. See y'all in a minute. Welcome back. Scenery might look a little different. My hair might look a little shorter. <laughs> Charlie might, might look a little hatless. Yeah. We're not giving out free advertisements now. Uh, so as we know, Thanksgiving is tomorrow and officially kicks off the holiday season. So I was just wondering... From Charlie's perspective, if he had a, exactly, if he had a favorite Thanksgiving memory, if it comes to football or family or anything, if he could think of anything. Got all night. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Hmm. Yeah, the last couple of Thanksgivings have kind of sucked because the Cowboys have lost like three out of four on Thanksgiving. So, um, I don't know. 
it's been nice being able to last four years kind of from college and be able to hang out with my mom and my dad on Thanksgiving for the past couple of years. It's been kind of lit AF. Let's see. We spent last night with your family. Yeah. Um, what are y'all's plans for tomorrow? What are y'all going to do? I'm going to be with our family again. There you go. Do you guys have to cook anything or no? I might. That's, that's, the, that's the way to do it, though. You always go somewhere else. They kind of like making a bar. Dude, they all like. They're like pumpkin, apples. They're Her like, family, oh no, I shouldn't sing the song. I'm recording. We're white, like white, white. Generic white. Like dry turkey. Like raisins in your potato salad white? I potato don't... salad? Yeah. Chicken salad? It's, but oh god. Yeah. That's worse. I, yeah. No, we're not that bad. So I guess we're like eggshell white. Apparently. <laughs> Damn. What? Okay. Turkey or the sides? Like, which is your favorite? The sides have to be, right? Yes. Has to be the sides. How good the person making the turkey is. I don't care. Like, it could be. It Fry could be. Fry the turkey and make turkey. that shit crispy on the skin, juicy. I'm taking that fucking turkey. Dude, I'm taking that mac and cheese. I'm taking trash. That I'm taking potatoes. That. I'm taking that green bean casserole. I'm taking those mashed potatoes. Come on now. Come on now. A good Come turkey on. is a good turkey. I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's a bad turkey. I'm not okay. saying turkey's bad. I'm not saying turkey with gravy is bad. I'm not saying fried turkey. I'm just saying the a, side. A good turkey, turkey is a good turkey. Good turkey. The sides of what make Thanksgiving, dude. Sorry. No. Yeah. That that turkey is the centerpiece. What it always takes the longest. It's always how the most fires start. You just gave me two reasons as to why turkeys suck. Not if you do them right. If you cook a yeah, turkey right, it is. But that's the issue. It's totally it's right. How, is how many how many of these people cooking turkeys are going to do it right? But you got to find somebody that can do it right. What if your family's fucked and you don't have anybody that can do it right? Then the sides are you go to. Exactly. I'm saying I've never had a turkey that's beat out mac and cheese. That's all I'm saying. We don't usually have mac and cheese at our Thanksgiving. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So what my family usually has is they have turkey, they have ham, they do green bean casserole, um, they usually do corn casserole, they do pineapple casserole. Dude, corn casserole is actually gas. Uh, we usually do rolls, they're more, more often than not King's Hawaiian rolls. Oh yeah, it has to be. Potatoes, um... Usually is cranberry sauce, even though most of the people in my family don't like it. Yeah, I don't eat that. And then for dessert, there's always... Um, there's usually like a pound cake. There's usually a sweet potato casserole, pecan pie. Um, Dude, I've been, I've been telling everybody. One, I'm probably going to gain 10 to 15 pounds tomorrow. I'm fasting. I am waiting on Thanksgiving anyways and i'm gonna need so much insulin i might need a refill i might need a new prescription <laughs> this is gonna be horrible can i drink in front of your family on thanksgiving have you had in a month yes i can't say what i want to say but yes you can can i get drunk i wouldn't go that <laughs> Charlie. What? You're gonna need to get drunk when the Cowboys put this ass whooping on y'all. I'm not I told you. I told you I'm not gonna watch it. Did, come on. Brad Brad's here visiting for Thanksgiving break. He said he's getting drunk tomorrow during the game. 
because it's not going to be fun otherwise. I'm not going to watch it. I probably won't even be able to watch the game. If I do, I'll be sitting in the parlor by myself watching it. Sad. All the more reason to get drunk. <laughs> huh? So, like I said, Thanksgiving is like the start of the holiday season, right? At least to me. Like when like obviously your tree's up. When do like when is it normally like after Thanksgiving? Before? And when Personally, is when is too early to listen to Christmas music? Personally, the Christmas season does not start until December first. For you, okay. For me. But for her, she had to bribe me in order to get that up. How'd she do that? Um. Well, you can't. You kind of can't really tell because the lights are on and it's just like bad for the camera. And we haven't finished it yet. We haven't put the ornaments or the topper on it. But the garland is burgundy and gold. Ew. So she's she's at least letting me do a commander's theme Christmas tree. Uh, why would you ruin Christmas like that? Piss off. I'm just asking, like, why would you... Nice from here, okay? No, I mean, I'm not... It looks great, but... A blue and white Christmas tree would look. I don't know. I don't know. I think you're sleeping on the colors. I had a Cowboys fan tip me twenty dollars at work today. Yeah, I bet if he well, he probably felt bad for you for what we're gonna do tomorrow. He didn't know I was a Commanders fan. I didn't tell him. Yeah, smart move. Probably wouldn't have tipped me. Well he he better have tipped me because I, I took in a charity case. I was the only person there and he walked in at like seven o'clock like I need a tire. Ain't no way. You better call a ride because your car's sitting here till tomorrow. We're not open tomorrow. And then it's sitting here till Friday. Oh, nope. I did it for him and he tipped me $20 for doing that, so. Oh, nice. I'll take it. Yeah, there you go. The power of work. But, like, I know these people at work that put up their Christmas tree, like, the day after Halloween, dude. No. It's ridiculous. Right. Like, it's one thing for us to just have our Christmas tree up and literally nothing else. Yeah. But those people that go all out so early, no. Dude, like, we put ours up. We put ours up last Saturday, but that's it. Like, we're not putting any outside decorations up until the day after Thanksgiving. Good. See, I can live with that. Because for me, normally, it's the day after Thanksgiving is when... Because Thanksgiving is a holiday. There's no reason to shadow and forget Thanksgiving because you're like, ooh. Honestly, I think I like Thanksgiving more than I like Christmas. I was watching First Take today on ESPN <laughs> and Mad Dog Russo. I don't know. You probably don't know who that is. But uh, big radio personality. He was there. Um, and they do the segment called What Are You Mad About? And he gives him three things that he's mad about. And one, the third thing was Thanksgiving and having to see for his family. <laughs> he was like, I don't want to go see all my relatives. I just want to sit on my couch, eat my eat my THC gummies and watch football and not be bothered by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's honest, I, like, I guess. I was like... He's got a point. He's got a point. No, I'm kidding. I'm excited. Amber's coming with all her kids and stuff tomorrow. And Oh, Lord. I met the baby last weekend. I'll send you pictures. Baby Hunter. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. It's going to be a... Uh... There's going to be, what, five of them? Five children. <laughs> five children, Amber, Michael, Poppy, me, Mom, Greg. What is that? Ten people? 
we're probably going to be somewhere around the same tomorrow. Yeah. They're bringing all the sides, but Poppy's making the turkey, so. <laughs> That's why I'm a big proponent of the sides this year. <laughs> yeah, I can't say I blame you on that one. I was going to talk about, like, other sports and stuff, but I don't know. I don't really... So, like, I was talking to Greg about this last night after we were done with the first part is... <sighs> like... The sports are seasonal for a reason, and when I care about them, is seasonal. Right, like, I don't really like, care about football when it's not football season. Like, I care about basketball. Like, I watched the Nuggets game tonight, which they lost, which was really incredibly annoying. But, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I don't really care about basketball until after the Super Bowl. Especially college basketball, I only watch March Madness. I don't watch like a two. Like if there's a game on a Tuesday night, I'm not watching it. I mean, dude, I, I haven't watched a full Commanders game since week seven. That's understandable. You guys suck. I'm just saying, like, well, that and would you just get so fucking busy? Like, don't get me wrong, I love football, but. Like, the analysts that sit there and watch every single football game, I don't know how the fuck you do that. You gotta think, that's their job. Like, that is their job. I mean, that's fair, but... Our job is not... Like, that's not the field we chose. Probably could have. I mean, you could argue maybe you should have been, but it's not. I mean... I'd have been, I'd have been fired in a day. Yeah, you wouldn't have made it very long, buddy. Hey, talk all the shit you want. I'm beating you in picks. Don't give a damn. <clears throat> but, yeah. Did, did you see, uh, have you heard about the, uh, one thing I do want to talk about is the hip drop tackle. Yeah, that we could potentially see a ban on it. In, uh... it is, it's getting banned. They, they, they banned it, I think. Okay. I mean, good. It's just an unsafe tackling practice. I... Yeah, I mean, it, I they say it happens about once. A game. Out. They say about it happens about once a game, and it happened to Florida State's quarterback, Jordan Trey. He broke his ankle, like Dak type of broke his ankle. Yeah. Like foot was that way, leg was this way. <laughs> um, I mean, I, mean, I, I get, I get it. Like, I think it was a ligament issue. Yeah. Okay. I, down for the season. I get that you're trying to prevent injuries, but what is a defender supposed to do in that situation? If you get them from behind and they're dragging you, like your only option is to drop your weight to the ground. So like now what do you do? Big. Like Derrick Henry, like you like you're not like you're not playing him. I mean, this is this is what happens when you make this push, because you you see it particularly with the DBs on bigger guys, yeah, far down the field. This is what happens when you make a push for your DBs to get smaller and faster every year. I mean, if you look at the average size of a corner today versus the average size of a corner ten years ago, there is an insane difference in the size. The game has just changed, man. They 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 don't want to see defense. Guys have to do. They don't, they don't want to see defense anymore. I mean, that's just period, end of story. <clears throat> Which, as someone who played a lot of defense as a kid and in high school, it kind of sucks because it was fun. Playing defense was fun. It really was. But now it's just... But now it's just like you can't you can't even t touch anybody. So let me ask you this. Who do you think that's, is the best corner in the league right now? What would you say? Who do you think is the best corner in the league right now? It doesn't have to be super thoughtful. I'm just using it as a hypothetical. Uh, Trent McDuffie for the Chiefs. All right, Trent Early McDuffie plays. is five foot eleven and 194 pounds. Yeah, him trying to tackle Derrick Henry. He's going to drop his hip. 
So how tall are you? You're like you're six two. About six one. Six one. Yeah. If you're six one. You're like what? Two twenty, two thirty. Two ten, maybe. Ten. All right. Um. So then I'm six two, and I'm two ninety five. I mean. Yeah. Like. NFL DBs are like tiny compared to other people in the league. And I'm not like all muscle either. Like these receivers are like six one. Two. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know, these receivers could body the fuck out of either one of us. No shit, they're professional athletes. What I'm saying is, like these receivers are six one two ten, but they're all muscle and jacked. So they are probably eighteen to thirty five times stronger than me. So trying to pull them to the ground while they don't want you to. I don't know. It just puts the defense in a, in a rough spot. I mean, do you remember that video of high school football where this kid caught the ball and the DB was trying to tackle him and the wide receiver literally just picked him up? Yes. In the end zone? I mean, it's, it's a legitimate thing to think about because DBs are just getting so small that it is very hard for them to do things like that. So they yeah. have to do things like the hip drop, but I, I'm sure there's a safer way that they could do it. They're just going to have to start diving at ankles. Like, if they're if they're coming at someone from the side or like behind them, they're just going to have to ankle tackle them. Like there's no way to... I mean, as soon as you just start getting feet and legs sucked under other people it just never ends well like the horse collar i mean it makes sense it's almost the same if that's what happened to tony pollard against the niners in the playoffs last year that's why that's how he broke his ankle um i don't know just interesting to yeah. see how quickly they're gonna they ban that and i think they're gonna end up banning the uh the tush push as well you think so? I don't, I don't yeah. think they're going to. I think they will. I think. What, from a safety perspective? They'll come up with something safety-wise. Whether it's I mean, quarterback. I'm, I'm amazed nobody's gotten hurt doing it yet. Yeah. Quarterback, knees, linemen, any, anything. Right. I mean, just the fact that people are going just face-to-face -face the whole time. Like, I'm amazed somebody hasn't, like, dived at Jalen Hurst's head. Yeah. I don't know. I don't it's, like uh, to go just because when I mean, we talked about this one day, I just don't like it. It just I, I feel like one day somebody's just gonna get seriously fucked up doing it, and I don't think it needs to come with to that. that. And it's like that's just rugby. That's not not football. Like it, I don't know. There's no there's no skill to that really. I mean, you can say the Eagles do it the best, so they're the most skilled at it. But it's literally just a scrum of people and who is who is one prepared for the snap right and, and, but i mean now they're running fakes out of it yeah i think they averaged two yards on that if they averaged one more yard on that they could just do that the entire way down the field yeah. like literally could just do the tush push the entire way down the field yeah, that's a scary fucking thought. Right. Three yards every play, you'll end up in the end zone. So, I don't know. But I think that uh, the Jordan uh, Jordan Travis for, the, for Florida State going out affects the college football playoff. I don't know if they'll – I don't know if they'll beat Florida this week. I think they, they might lose with their backup in. I, I don't see FSU making it to the Final Four. Me neither. Uh, I think they'll lose. I think they'll lose one of their last two. Speaking of the college football playoffs, though, dude, they uh, there's some interesting scenarios that could happen here, for sure. There's a scenario where the committee is fucked, dude. Yeah. Like, if Alabama beats Georgia. If Alabama beats Georgia, um, so at this point, either Ohio State or Michigan is going to have one loss. 
whoever wins, whoever loses for Ohio State, Michigan is out. They they can't make the playoff. They they can't. Right, well, let me ask you this. So let's say, let's say Michigan loses. Okay. Let's say Georgia loses to Alabama. Are you saying Michigan loses what this week? Yes. They're out. They're done. All right. So, all right. If Georgia loses to Alabama, Georgia stays. Alabama comes in. See, that's when it's hard because you'll have a Pac-12 champion, one loss. I think if the ACC champion with one loss, Florida State or Louisville. I don't think they make it in just based on strength of schedule. So you'll have Pac-12 champ, either undefeated or one loss, who will get in. You'll have Big Ten undefeated champ who will get in. That leaves you two spots. And let's just say Texas wins out in three teams between Georgia, Alabama, Texas. You can't put Alabama in without putting Texas in. You can't because Texas beat Alabama. Right. So it's either you put Texas in and Alabama in, or you put keep Georgia in and you put Texas in. Even if Alabama beats Georgia. You, you, because Alabama cannot leapfrog Texas because they lost to them. Right. Well, who's Texas' uh, last couple games? They got... Texas Tech, and then they have the Big 12 title game. Which is against who? It, uh, it could either be Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, or I think that's it. Either so, so let's say Texas lose one, loses one of their last games. Bay They're out. Georgia. Yeah. Texas is out. Texas has to win out to get in. Right. Um, I mean, I honestly kind of see a scenario where – Georgia doesn't get in. That's what I was just saying. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, Tennessee's ranked 25th, but a 20 a ranked opponent is no nothing to scoff at, regardless of the rank. Uh, Georgia, I don't think I don't think Tennessee should be ranked, dude. I mean, that's just my opinion. We don't have to get into that, but I mean, they've lost four games and they just got beat by 30 against Georgia, so. Anyway, um, they've lost. Okay, they lost their last. Tennessee lost their last game, thirty-eight to ten to Georgia, and they lost the game back before that, thirty-six to seven to Missouri. They should not be ranked. Well, so there, there's a legitimate chance that Georgia doesn't find its way in. Um, either our two or our, our three, either Ohio State or Michigan, is not going to make it in. Ohio State or Michigan is not getting in, and one of either Washington or Oregon is not getting in. Right. I would rather see Washington. Washington has just had a much harder schedule. Yeah, I think – I don't know, though, dude. I think if they played right now, I think Oregon would win. You think so? Well, I, I looked up the schedule, and why does Washington have a to-be-determined game? That's the Pac-12 title game. So they've they've locked their – Okay. They've locked their spot in, but it's between um, Oregon and Oregon State, I think. Oregon and Arizona, which I don't even know how because, oh, I guess they didn't play. Oh, shit. I don't know how they're going to decide that. Oh, I know how. If... If Oregon loses this week and Arizona wins, it'll be Washington and Arizona in the Pac-12 title game, I think. Arizona and not Arizona State? Arizona. That's a that's a little bit of a change of pace. Yeah, the Pac-12 has just been a change of pace this year, dude. They've been good. Dude, I've always loved uh, watching Arizona State games just because they're jerseys. Yeah. Clean uniforms. Yeah, I don't I don't know, dude. I mean this is definitely the craziest year for the college football playoff rankings. I mean, it is very realistic that three of the current top four do not make it. Yes. And we're two weeks away from the final rankings. Right. 
not even a week and a half. Right. But there's also a, a very good possibility that three of the four do make it. Yeah. Who would you rather see stay, Ohio State or Michigan? Honestly, Michigan, dude. Michigan. I feel like they got they got shafted with this whole. I think Ohio State got upset because they were so used to get beating everybody, and Michigan has spanked their ass for the past two years. So they got all butt hurt and tried to come up with something to get Michigan out. And it would honestly, like, it would be awesome. And it would make me feel really good if Michigan beat Ohio State and then won the national championship. Really? That I mean, would be out, out of the current yeah. top four, I would have to say I'd, I'd rather either see Michigan or Washington do it. I think Georgia. I'm tired. So th- this is how people feel about Alabama. They're just tired of watching them win. Dude, they've won like 28 games in a row, dude. Like it, when when they play Alabama in the SEC championship game, they will have won 30 straight games. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. Yeah, maybe it it, done it. I don't know. I don't know. I really, I really do not know. I am rooting for as a West Virginia fan. This is what I'm rooting for this week. I need TCU to beat Oklahoma. BYU to beat Oklahoma State and Iowa State to beat Kansas State and for us to win. I think if that happens, we go to the Big 12 title game. Oh, and what's this thing I've been saying about JMU not being allowed into a bowl game or something? So they were Division One AA, so FCS. And the rule is, and they're transferring to Division One FBS, the rule is you have to have one year of a mixed schedule of FBS, FCS, so Division 1A and 1AA teams. Then your second year, you have to play all FBS teams, like Division 1. And then your third year, you're eligible to play in conference championship and bowl games. That's the rule. Mm-hmm. JMU skipped a step. So they said, we don't want to play any FCS teams. So their first year in FBS, they played all FBS Division One A schools, and this year is their second year as an FBS school, and they're ten and one, and they submitted a waiver to the NCAA, being like, "Well, we already played our full year of scheduled FBS opponents. Can we just play in a bowl this year?" And me like, and they would be in their conference championship game, and the NCAA was like, "Nah, that's worship," which is stupid. It's stupid. The NCAA, man, they just suck, dude. All their rulings, they're just stupid. Every national sports league or college sports league, they're all the same. The NCAA, it's just, they're just shit, dude. They're annoying. They're not. They're the anti-fun association. <laughs> you just bite your nipple. Do you need to say something to the viewers? You know good and damn well, ain't nobody making it this far. Oh, oh, stop. Oh, wait. All right, man. I think that's all we got, right? Uh, I think so. There's probably another question in there, but... That's all right. Jesus, dude, I'm tired. Me too. Um... This is our Thanksgiving episode. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Charlie, I'm thankful we're friends, buddy. I love you, man. You're not going to fucking say it back. I love you too, buddy boy. Thank you. Now we can now we can end it. Fair enough. Good night, everybody. All right. See you all next week.